Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Palestine death cult. Ooh. Old Joe Biden and good cop, bad cop? <laughs> Welcome back. Hope you all had a great weekend. Let's dive right in. What do we got? New poll shows 57% of Gaza and 73% of West Bank support October 7th. Hmm. That's not a good number. This is while 55% of Gazans don't have sufficient food for a day or two. And 61% say they lost a family member due to the actions of their government. Palestinians are a death cult. At some point, you can't deny them what they're begging for. They support Hamas. Just have a look at this. They agree with the decision to launch the attack on October 7th, which has brought them to this point. Now, do they agree with it because of the retaliation? And they said, like, yeah, we should have done it, but it's like weird retrospective angle anyway the truth is is that they support hamas and hamas is doing nothing for them 52 percent of gazans want to see hamas rule after the war only 30 percent 30 37 percent for the palestinian authority palestinians would overwhelmingly vote for hamas over the palestinian authority so the people that got them into this mess the ones that everyone over in the West is rah, rah, hurrah, save the Palestinians, stop the genocide, literally want a terrorist organization to run their government. So, there it is. And let's check out this cognitive dissonance. We have one of the uh, alternatives vouching for the Palestinians. See what she got to say. Would you say you're pro-Palestine or pro-Israel? Pro-Palestine. As a gay man, I would be punished and or put in prison or killed if I were openly gay in Palestine. How do you react to that? I didn't know that. So... It is illegal to be gay in Palestine. You are punished by is prison or death. Is Israel? No, Israel has gay pride. Israel is completely open to lesbian and gay people. Palestine puts them in prison or kills them. You, were, you weren't aware of that? I was not aware of that, no. So that does pose an interesting aspect. Aspect. Have you seen uh, the Queers for Palestine movement? It's a, very, it's a very common movement, but I don't see any Muslims for queer movement. Uh, yes. That's where it gets gray, right? It's not gray. It's black and white, fool. For me, it's not gray. I am fearful of Islam because there is no Islamic country on earth that embraces me as a gay man. So, okay, okay, so maybe I'm confused because Israel, which is an, still an Islam country, right? No, 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 Jewish. Okay, 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 okay. So Israel's Jewish, Palestinians are Islamic. Okay. Uh, get educated, fool, because guess what? You're dumb. You rah, rah. Cheer for the next thing that the media tells you to cheer for. Way to have a brain, person. Way to have a brain. All right, moving right along. Police are actively investigating after someone driving a red pickup truck was doing burnouts and left tire marks on Pride Mural after it was installed three days ago. Huntington, West Virginia. Currently, law enforcement is currently investigating. <laughs> That's literally hilarious. Uh, an incident captured on video. Well, we just heard what it was. Let's see what it is. This guy seems to be doing quite the burnout. We've seen a couple of these in the past. And I don't condone the behavior. I think it's a little bit outrageous. If you don't like something, you don't need to react this way. Anyway, you have a closer look. You decide what you think. But it was a tremendous burnout.
another angle. Yeah, so to create that amount of uh, burnt rubber and smoke, you have to do uh, serious <laughs> gas pressing, whatever, for lack of a better word. Anyway, moving right along. Feeding the future. Why renovation and reinvention are key to saving our food system. Tiger, what are you doing showing us this from the World Economic Forum? Well, it's leading into a couple of other things. Uh, and look at this industrial processing of food as opposed to agricultural industrial farming well they want to slowly introduce we've heard talk of bugs and things like that but they want to change the manufacturing process transformation that impact humans of course and it's going to be a gradual process so from renovation to reinvention here we go so number one Reduce fat, sugar, and additives. Yeah, okay, we can all agree on that. Sure, reducing agricultural inputs. Hmm, what does that mean? Like what we're putting into agriculture. So reducing meat, it sounds like. Uh, adding fibers and probiotics to what? Uh, Unpack labeling to encourage healthier choices. So yeah, you should buy this one produced by the WEF. Stage two, reinvention. So they this aims to radically transform how food is produced, distributed, and consumed, enhancing sustainability, of course nutritional quality and accessibility scaled grower upper adoption sorry of sustainable agriculture yeah so like growing things in the lab uh, buildings where everything is grown under artificial light scaled consumer adoption of plant-based and novel protein so we'll scale it we'll just slowly introduce it you know and eventually we'll just label everything so you're like oh well it turns out everything's made of this uh soylent Personalized nutrition, there you go, you just go ahead and get on your social credit score app and uh, you'll get told what to do and how to do it and if you follow along you'll have a great score and your personalized nutrition you just get delivered to your house. Nutrition led product innovation and marketing. So yeah, okay, like they're trying to change the food system and changing it from what? Industrial agriculture which is farming outside in fields and they want to Lab grow meat. Bill Gates is all up in it, and uh, our good buddy Jeff Be Bezos as well. He just boosted his plant-based meat pledge to a hundred million. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jeff Bezos Earth Fund is investing in alternative meat to the tune of one hundred million. And why is it important? Well, because it's big bucks. That's why they can make more money if they control the entire food system. Uh, yeah, so primarily plant-based, precision fermented and cultivated meat. I don't know, people. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Not interested in trying it. But guess what? CNN Health has tried it and they've tested it. And apparently plant-based ultra-processed food is linked to heart disease and early death. Yikes. So, hmm, maybe there's more to the story. Don't know. Let's have a look. Want to reduce your risk of developing chronic disease and live longer while also helping the planet? Eat a plant-based diet, experts say. Does that mean you can fill your plate with boxed macaroni and cheese, deep dish frozen veggie pizza, or fast food french fries, and have a donut or three for dessert? While all those ultra-processed choices may be meat-free, they are not without risk, said Dwayne Meller, a registered dietitian and senior teaching fellow at Aston Medical School in Birmingham, United Kingdom, we can't always assume plant-based means healthy, as after all, sugar is plant-based. Miller said in a statement, many foods that do not contain animal products, which includes biscuits, crisps, confectionery, and soft drinks, are technically plant-based, but would not be considered essential as part of a healthy diet by the majority of people. Yeah, anything that's like whole, well, not whole wheat, but white, white flour-based, which is just processed wheat sugar salt all these processed things yeah not good for you so guess what plant-based ain't always great if it's ultra processed which is likely what it is going to be like if they take a soybean and turn it into what is going to look like ground beef burger patty it's ultra processed no matter what so be careful what you're putting in your body people read the labels try and make it yourself buy ingredients make a recipe read a recipe whatever Anyway, what's going on? Everyone's worried about the G7. Well, here's a scoop. 
And uh, apparently Joe Biden is worse than he's ever been. Zoom in on this. Have a look. Also, last night, awkward moment with President Biden where he was looking very doddery. He was wandering around. Um, he sort of wandered off and, 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 and George Maloney, the Italian premier, had to sort of, sort of guide him back to the crowd. It was um, quite painful uh, viewing. Um, everyone's putting a slight brave face on it this morning. Um, we've got some more for that for the paper tomorrow. But, um, yeah, you can... Looks like the sun's a bit bright for the old fella's eyes there as well. Like, good lord. See from that footage yourself. It's, you know, this is getting embarrassing. There you go. And, uh, you know, you do really wonder how President Biden... Dark Brandon! ...run a, an election campaign in October and November. Yeah, it's election. dark, all right. If he won, is, he, is that a man you really think is going to get through the next four years? I mean, you're right. It's absolutely painful to watch, and that clip's going viral currently on social media. Obviously, Donald Trump and the Republicans really looking to ham it up. Um... It's not hard to ham it up, man. That is just like the... That's the epitome of lies. Like, how is he in power? How do people believe he's actually running the country? Check his Twitter account. It's hilarious. He's totally writing those things. Sky's gone. The lights are on. But nobody's home. And, uh, yeah, okay, so how are they trying to spin this? What's this lady saying? I guess this is his, like, press... Public... Public, uh... Whatever. ...and voices across... Uh, the country to combat this and make it clear that, uh, that, that not, not only do we not play this game, but to your point, President Biden was out there literally representing America at the G7, saluting our troops, you know, d doing the, what he does as President of the United States. And look, we're going to see more of this. I mean, this is just the reality of campaigning in 2024. So we have to combat that disinformation. We have to hit it hard wh when it happens and make it clear that these are dirty tactics that MAGA Republicans are using because they can't run on the issues, Lemire. They have to run. They have to use these dirty tactics like this because they are not right with Americans on the issues. Okay, sure, lady. So here's the deal. Like, they're attacking Trump at every turn that they can with regards to his convictions, with regards to uh, the whole Stormy Daniels thing. Just literally go to POTUS, at P-O... T-U-S on Twitter and read through some of the garbage that they post. <clears throat> the Biden-Harris HQ I believe is another one. Uh, and it's ridiculous. Like She's like calling this misinformation, disinformation. And so you guys saw the video of old man looking around and like things he says and stuff. Well, she's telling us that we should censor it. Adrian Elrod tries to spin the viral video of Biden wandering aimlessly across Italy as disinformation and demands social media platforms censor it. Absolutely do what she says. All right, corporate media, don't believe your lying eyes. Biden has never been sharper. Okay, we've got the receipts. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Start your tape right now because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of of Biden is the best Biden ever. He no lost. He no so long as he denied. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been. President Biden has a photographic memory. His understanding and mastery of a complicated geopolitical situation is remarkable. He is sharp, intensely probing, and detail oriented and focused. Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I don't think she was supposed to be here. I was sitting, you know, she was dead. Two feet from him across the table, and he was, you know, intense. He had trouble walking sometimes. Yeah, so did FDR. He wanted GD war. But he's totally focused. He's very sharp. They say he's sharp in meetings and so on. Very lucid, low, very well informed. Biden is stately. He comes with gravitas. There hasn't been, as far as I know, a single claim that Biden made a mistake. Ageism is an issue. Americans have a rich history of holding people's physical characteristics against them. Okay, you can ask African Americans. He's older. That doesn't Good mean God. that he is unfit, and there's a lot of ageism there. Now this age attack, this ageism by the right. I mean, he's 81. What are you? What are you going to do? Himself, the way that he used to. They want to think to, is to take on government if we get out of line, which they're talking again about, and then how he, then that's him. Him lying around. I think people should be speaking up for Joe Biden. Americans and reporters in the media are just judging him by a physical appearance, and it's horribly unfair. Age 
is an asset. He showed exactly how with it he is. The flip side of this coin is that he has a tremendous amount of wisdom and experience. Have you heard any concerns from anyone who has met with President Biden about him seeing, seeming a little slower? No. More wild speculation from a bunch of people who have probably never been in a room with Joe Biden and certainly don't have medical degrees that I'm aware of. You don't get paid for performance to be president. You don't. The job is not a job of endurance. I don't see Donald Trump out bike riding like Joe Biden. It's the Hillary's email. All they have is that he's old. He can clear a dementia bar, and that's probably a win. The media are not fair, and they're getting less and less fair, and things are frightening. You have a, you have uh, Wall Street Journal running a horribly sourced piece saying that Biden is unfit. Do be a Wall Street Journal report about the president's acuity. Shoddy story by the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. uh, questioning Biden's mental fitness. Wall Street Journal story had a lot of flaws, as you said. But Sinclair, they didn't do any original reporting. They didn't follow up. They didn't do any work. Here is the day. Hirsch Go Goldberg Poland is, is still... <laughs> He, he is not here with us, but he's still being held by Hamas. But a huge part of the Mueller report talks about Russian disinformation tactics. And one of the themes this election cycle is that Joe Biden is too old to lead. And so everyone is seizing upon this. And it is a classic disinformation tactic. And I think the best thing that we can do is to prepare the American people for this false narrative. So thank Grabian, or Grabian, whatever that is, for putting that together. That was amazing. And there it is. Like, take it for what it is. You can see the liberal government, the Democrats there, literally, like, spinning everything that, that's happening and saying that it, it's the other crew doing it. And they're just lying through their teeth. It's absolutely horrific to watch. And one last thing with old Joe is, uh, you know, you meet with your homies, people you love, you know, you dap it up. You know, pat on the back. But how often do you go in for the deep forehead to forehead eye gaze? Well, here's his homeboy, Pope Francis. Let's check it out. Just getting deep. Third eye to third eye. Transmutation of energy. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, maybe that's what we should all be doing. Good God. I don't even know what to say about that. Take it for what it is. All right. Uh, so this is what they call anti-racist. All right. Uh, BLM leader, whites are subhuman genetic defects. All right. Uh, she goes uh, forward and says whiteness is non-humexness. Let's just uh, enlarge this so you guys can have an idea of exactly what's happening here. Um, in fact, white skin is subhuman. So human, they remove the A and put an X in because this person is really smart. All phenotypes exist within the black family. All white people are a genetic defect of blackness. White people have a higher concentration of enzyme inhibitors that suppress melanin production. They are genetically deficient because melanin is present at the inception of life. Melanin is directly linked to fertility and the human reproductive system. Melanin is directly linked to strong bones. Melanin is directly linked to strength of the nervous system. Melanin is directly linked to the strength of senses such as vision and hearing. Melanin is directly linked to the strength of neurosystems affecting capacities like intelligence, memory, and creativity. Melanin enables black skin to capture light and hold it in its memory mode, which reveals that blackness converts light into knowledge. <clears throat> There you have it. Go ahead and give her the award for she figured it out. It sounds like she was miseducated at U of T. Her name is Yushra Kolgali. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson chiming in there. Yeah, she obviously, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a you know, poem or something like that. There's absolutely no grammatical errors in that. All right, moving right along. What are the police doing these days? working real hard. Let's have a look. Let's get a closer look. Yeah, 
Yeah, not exactly sure where this lawless place is. Perhaps somebody's seen the, uh... What's this? City of San Jose, California. All right, so they've totally lost the plot there. It is over. Well, what else is going on? Over here in uh, London, let's see what they're battling over here. Well, you can see right here, there is a, uh, a cow coming in from the right of your screen. <laughs> Got it. Oh, wait. Secured. What the fuck was that? Get out of the way, he says. Don't worry. I've got this under control. Well done. All right. Uh, look out in Japan. Flesh-eating bacteria spreads at a record rate. Potentially deadly condition is caused by an unusual manifestation of the strept A bacteria that triggers necrotizing fasciitis. Deadly flesh-eating bacteria is spreading at a record rate in Japan with the capital Tokyo as a hotspot. So far this year, the country has reported 977 cases of the streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, STSS, already exceeding an all-time high of 941 infections detected in 2023 so we're halfway through the year and we've already surpassed last year's yikes look out uh, the condition is caused by an unusual manifestation of the strep a bacteria pathogen itself is common between 5 and 20 percent of healthy adults have latent symptom-free infections but it can progress into a range of diseases from tonsillitis impetigo to scarlet fever and pneumonia in some severe cases strep a bacteria can become invasive seeping from cuts and wounds deep in soft tissue and muscle where it triggers necrotizing fasciitis, a flesh-eating disease. It is this condition that is currently spreading at record rates in Japan, according to data from the county National Institute of Infectious Disease this week. Symptoms begin with fever or muscle aches, followed by low blood pressure, organ failure, and septic shock can follow within 48 hours. It can be deadly without rapid treatment with antibiotics. So heads up, if you're feeling any of these symptoms, go ahead and get to the doctor immediately if you're in Japan or just left. It's been most affected by a record surge, 145 cases in the first six months of 2024. It's not unusual to see surges, pandemic rebound. Sure, yeah, so uh, heads up in Japan. Former CDC director predicts bird flu pandemic. Yeah, so this guy here has come out and said a number of interesting things about COVID-19. And uh, he's basically saying, I really do think it's very likely that we will at some point it's not a question of if, it's more of a question of when we will have a bird flu pandemic. And there's lots of information coming out about how people were uh, investigating this in the lab, even in the U.S., some different uh, bird flu strains, how they were messing with it, gain of function type of stuff. So there you have it, people. Keep an eye out uh, for everything because it looks like we live in the worst planet on earth because it's falling apart before your eyes. But go ahead and uh, check out the Bible. There's a bunch of interesting things in there for everybody. Sigma Tiger, signing out.